Hello everyone, welcome to today's special announcement video. Octopus Deploy had a huge 2021. We started the year with taking on some investment. Uh, later in the year, we released uh, Configus Code into beta. We opened our brand new uh, office in on the South Banks in Brisbane. Uh, and whilst that, all that was happening, in the background, we were working on our very first uh, acquisition. Um, and we'll be jumping into that today with uh, Mr. Michael Richardson, our Director of Product. Hey, Michael. Hey, Derek. How are you? Happy New Year. I don't happy think New I've Year. seen you in 2022 yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Happy New Year as well. Uh, very exciting uh, news. So, we acquired Dist, and they're joining the, the Octopus family. Um, so Dist is a, a cloud-native container registry and artifact repository that works natively with Docker and Kubernetes. Tell us a little bit about how, or how all this happened. So let me set the scene a little bit first. When the first version of Octopus shipped, there was no built-in repository for artifact storage. Users had to manage third-party tools to push their build artifacts to, before Octopus could deploy them. And years later, we introduced the, the built-in package store and it supported NuGet files, zip files, Java packages. And it became the default choice because it was a, a better experience. And fast forward to today, 2022, and containers are winning the artifact wars. We see this from our own customers and yet the built-in package repository in Octopus, it doesn't support container images today. So once again, our customers are forced to use external container registries, which adds friction to the experience. So for all the same reasons that it made sense for Octopus to have a built-in package repository in the early days, we think it makes sense for Octopus to have a first party container registry today. And then an opportunity arose. So Yun and Steven are the founders of Dist. Uh, Dist, as you mentioned, is a cloud-based artifact repository for container images and Maven artifacts. And together, they bootstrapped the company over the past three years based in Sydney, Australia. Um, they've grown a small group of happy customers, which is an incredible achievement. And growing a business to the next level requires wearing a whole bunch of hats that made them realize that they're, they're very much technologists at heart. Uh, for example, they preferred not to appear in this video today something that you and I, Derek, can certainly empathize with. You folks are, are very intimidating. And they approached Octopus as they felt there could be a really nice fit with them joining, and we agreed. The problems they aim to solve with this, uh, low latency, reliable, secure artifact storage, uh, were a great match for what we were looking to do. And when we looked at the way they built it, we were super impressed. And Stephen and you and themselves, right from the beginning, we could tell they were going to be really valuable members of, of our team. And so, you know, this is the part of the movie where we do a little musical montage of emails being sent and documents being signed. But the end result is that Stephen and Yun have joined Octopus and Octopus has acquired the technology behind Dist, which we plan to use to help us build an Octopus container registry. Hopefully a great result. That's really cool, Michael. Uh, that is really, really cool. So what does this mean for Octopus users? Uh, what can they expect to see as part of the product? You know, what problems uh, will it help with and solve for our users? Yeah, so I think initially it will address the same two pain points that the built-in package feed does today. First of which is convenience. It's just there. And the second is retention policies. So packages and container images especially, they consume disk space. And with the way that many organizations have their pipelines configured, they produce a lot of, of artifacts. Um, and because Octopus understands releases of your applications and which environments they're in, it's in the ideal place to enact retention policies so that, for example, you keep the artifacts that are associated with in-flight releases while you clean up those that aren't. And you can set different retention policies for different environments so that you can keep production releases around for much longer. And these points are uh, really valuable. Longer term, we're, we're pretty excited to explore some other ideas around orchestration of artifacts. So in particular, it's common for multiple repositories or you know registries in container terms to, to be involved in an application's lifecycle. And this is often for a mix of performance and security reasons. For example, it's common for a significant chunk of the time in build and deployment processes 
to be taken up just by moving bits around, by pushing artifacts. We're often talking about gigabytes easily. And so one way to mitigate this is to have one registry located very close to your build server to make pushing built images fast, and another located close to where your application is hosted. And even this might be multiple registries if your application is geographically distributed. And on the security side, it's pretty common to have a lockdown registry used for production. Um, and we think Octopus is really well placed to orchestrate the promotion of images between these registries. So imagine that when a release becomes eligible to be promoted to production, the, the images were just magically replicated to, to the appropriate registry. We see people wire this up themselves today, and we've long felt that it would be a pretty amazing in the box feature. So these are, these are the type of problems we're looking to solve. Definitely can see the value there. I love the idea of the, the container being tied to your life cycle so that it's, it's automatically cleaned up. Uh, you know, obviously, yep. octopus has been hygienic animals. Um, uh, you know, obviously, uh, there's uh, a joke there to be made there. Well, uh, you know, when you have a healthy retention policy, Michael, that's definitely right. true. That's for sure. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, with this being our first acquisition, does this signal a change for Octopus going forward? You know, obviously we, we've tended to roll our own, you know, is this the first of many? Is this the, the first of maybe a few strategic um, acquisitions? So over the past few years, Octopus has grown so much and it means we can do things like this. I think the answer to your question is we'll do whatever we thinks, think we'll build the best product. The obvious benefit of acquiring uh, technology and experience is we can deliver great features faster. And in this case, with the this team's help, we, we think we can get there faster. Yeah. Um, so I heard that Dist is written in Java and Kotlin. Um, given Octopus is primarily uh, written in .NET, how does that going to work? You know, does it impact the way we'll integrate it? Yeah, it is written in, in Kotlin and Java. So our plan is to host it as its own service, but it will appear tightly integrated into the Octopus UI. I think it's likely this is the approach we would have taken regardless of which language it used. Um, having significant components written in different languages definitely has pros and cons, and it's, it's probably inevitable in the long term. On the one hand, we really like the idea of having significant Java development inside of Octopus. It can only help us better understand the problems unique to that stack, you know, to build that uh, empathy that only living and breathing those problems can bring. On the other hand, it can make it harder for people to jump between teams and sharing code libraries becomes a little more difficult. Um, a bunch of our extensions today, like uh, the Team City and Bamboo plugins, for example, are written in Java. The answer is, uh, we don't know. Let, let's find out. Should be fun. Maybe one for a late in the year webinar. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that one out. Um, we'll have that in December. <laughs> so when you say we'll host it as its own service, uh, what does this mean for it being available uh, on self-hosted instances? Uh, or is it only going to be a cloud-only product? Right. So, so Dist is a cloud native. It has no self-hosted option. Uh, until this point, we've worked really hard to maintain feature parity uh, between Octopus Server and cloud offerings. The reality is at some point we'll break that. At this stage, we're pretty confident we will initially launch an Octopus container registry as a service on Octopus Cloud. You'll be able to consume it from Octopus Server, but the registry would be hosted by us. The, the whole story is a little more complicated than that. You know, as we mentioned earlier, often what you actually want is multiple registries involved in a release's progression through build, testing, and eventually deployed to production. Um, and where your Octopus instance is orchestrating this. So your primary registry might be the Octopus Cloud registry, but we might provide some kind of edge node designed to sit close to your build server. Or you might just use the built-in, uh, the build server's built-in registry if it has one. And the final destination for those images uh, associated with a release might be a registry within a public cloud provider like AWS's container registry. Because, you know, for example, if you're deploying to uh, AWS App Runner, say, the images for that, they, they have to be hosted in ECR. Um, and, you know, even when we say an Octopus Cloud registry, you know, today we have multiple geographic regions for, for Octopus Cloud and, and the same will apply for for the container registries. And 
all of this feels like the way the world's heading in general. Often it's no longer simply uh, on-prem versus cloud. It's, it's some hybrid of both. And one of the things that made this attractive to us is it has this concept of an edge network. So it acts as a geographically distributed cache so that image layers get cached as close as possible to, to where you pull them from. And so I think the design challenge that we have with this is to figure out how to support modeling this in a seamless way so that you know you have the lowest latency possible for pushing and pulling images, and then the images are just magically replicated to where you want them and retention policies magically clean them up when you no longer want them. And yeah, we feel there is definite value in making this easier to achieve than it is currently. I really love that idea. Uh, I think this is going to be such a cool thing in Octavus. So what does this mean for existing supported package types? Uh, only good things. Uh, we're not removing anything. We're just adding another option. So any enhancements we add to Octopus should benefit all package types. And, you know, it's probably a little out of scope for today's discussion, um, but the, this, there's an interesting idea around using container registries to store any arbitrary content, not only container images. So, you know, the OCI distribution spec details this and registries that support it mean you can push, yeah, um, non-container image content. So uh, a common and nice example of this is, is Helm charts. Um, and so... Perhaps over time, uh, this will become the standard way of storing and retrieving any content, but we'll see. That was really cool. Thank you so much, uh, Michael, for sharing that with us. Um, that's really exciting. Um, I'm really excited about our, is, right? our acquisition. Yeah, I think this is going to have so many cool uh, features. I'm really, I'm really excited to see what happens uh, in the near future with it. So, unfortunately, uh, that is the end of today's uh, announcement video. If you're interested in a container registry within Octopus, please subscribe to the feature on our roadmap on octopus.com. Uh, we'll keep you updated with developments and more than likely reach out to you to, to help us build it too. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and please do sec uh, stick a subscribe on our YouTube channel. We're going to be uh, posting more videos in 2022 uh, along with our uh, great educational content as well. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and happy deployments. Bye, folks.